All right, it's the gallery. We have a, uh, not sure what kind of wood that is, but cherry. That, cherry? Okay. Um, nice thickness, retained all the bark, which is important. Um, if any of this bark comes off, you really need to take it all off. It's either all the bark or no bark. Very nice shape, proportion, base. Took the time to turn the bottom. And it's nice and round and coved on the inside. So that, that piece really works. I wish it was drier because it's starting to pop off. Okay. But I don't have to Okay. Well, wood is a natural <laughs> element, so it will move with the environment, which is fine. It's pretty. You just missed There you go. See this light on you now? There you go. Oh, okay. perfect. Okay. Um, this has a nice foot on it. It's pretty wood. I would probably bring the rim in a little bit more to create more of a contrast between the rim and the uh, curve here. Uh, and with a, uh, a sharp scraper, you might be able to get a really fine cut through here as we have some undulations. Uh, through there, but uh, that's a great start. That's a good piece. It's a good, good start, turn bottom. We have a large piece here. This has a nice, actually, uh, this has a uh, chuck insert, which I would probably um, try to avoid that if we could re reverse turn that and actually create maybe a cove base on that with the, uh, there's enough wood here, you can probably create a little ring and a little foot, but uh, this, this clearly had the chuck in the base, which uh, I'd like to see that finished. The weight is nice, it's a nice, significant, substantial piece, retained all the bark, beautiful grain, and the curve, the curve is really nice. It starts moving on me, so I, I was trying to get a better even flow on the outside, but okay. by the time Carolina came on, I had to stop and watch them. And <laughs> I got back and you get wet. Uh, <laughs> me, um, one, one idea is to rough turn this when it's wet to an inch thick, inch and a half thick, and let it dry. Wax the outside, then put it back on the lathe in a couple of months when it's down to about 10% moisture, and then you, then you wouldn't have any movement at all. Are you likely to lose the bark if you do that, though? No, not necessarily. I would I would put a fine line of super glue around the outside to freeze the bark to the uh, the wood, and then as it dries, the bark will move with the wood. So that's how. And then you'll retain the bark. I saw this piece earlier. This is a, a very interesting. Initially, I thought it was unusual because I usually like to see a nice round curve, but actually, this this works in, in an interesting way because the uh, the surface of this very unusual kind of a moon surface, spiky, has the burl character, which is really dramatic. And to accentuate that with those 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 walls that Cliffs. come up is not interesting. And the base is a cove with a, a large foot. So actually that's a very interesting piece, I think. And the weight with the burl is okay. It gives it a really uh, kind of a textured, structured finish. Uh, I like that piece. Interesting. Which sure. piece is that? This is a rev, rewit, pro, pro, pro it, sorry, pro it. How long have you been turning? A couple years. Okay, no, that's a very creative, very creative piece. Um, I always like these kind of pieces. They're, uh, this is that colored laminated wood. Um, Spectraply. Spectraply. And that's a dramatic, it's just dramatic by virtue of the wood. Uh, nice rim treatment. Spectraply minimum thickness is 9 ply. Okay. We ordered special four ply and six ply, so we can cut it with a laser. Okay. We're thinking that could be a kit. It took 30 minutes to glue that up. So you get a kit, you open it up, you glue all the pieces together, you clamp it, the next day you turn it. Okay. There's nobody out there offering a segmented kit that I know of. Okay. Is that what it's kind of glue? Uh, what kind of glue is it? White glue. White glue, laminated together. 
I like the foot. It's balanced. It's got a little cove and a burnished ring, which is really nice. Took the time to finish the bottom. I always like to see a finished bottom. Inside is well finished. Uh, it's really nice. Interesting piece. Uh, we have a small piece. That is a beautiful little cup shape, retained all the bark. Um, a lot of detail on the foot, well balanced. The uh, bill leathers, it's pecan wood. That's, that's just a pretty little piece, well balanced. It's not too heavy, it's got the right weight. Very nice. We have a bowling pin. I've always liked the bowling pin shape, I really have. And uh, out of cedar, red cedar, that's dramatic. That is really dramatic. So I, that really works. It's well turned, well finished. Um, okay. That's a really pretty piece. It's just it's just an, it was an exercise in spindle turning. Okay. I found it online yeah. with all the different diameters. So I just took a chunk of cedar I had and just yeah. tried it. That's a parting tool to get my diameters and that's great. The dots. That's, uh, that's great. Really pretty. I like the contrast between the hardwood and the sapwood. If you can sprinkle that color in, that's just really pretty with a knot and gives it a lot of character. So that's really good. Is that pretty fast? We have a really. Uh, it's got a little bit of splitting. Like really, a, really a beautiful salad bowl. Uh, this is just a nice week for a salad bowl. It has a nice rim treatment. It feels good. The curve is nice on the inside. It's got a turn bottom. I always like to see a turn bottom. I think the bottom's proportion might, might for a salad bowl be even a little bit wider. Could be a little wider out in this area for a base, but uh, that works fine. And it might give it a little more lift here. You know, just lift that a little higher, but otherwise, angled rim, which is really decorative, and that works really well. So that's really pretty. What's the wood? Cherry. Cherry, cherry. cherry wood. A uh, little rosewood dust and super glue. You could have a little, grind a little rosewood dust, drop that in there, and put a dab of super glue in, in a crack like that, and that would seal it up forever. Um, we have a uh, beautiful colored pepper mill. Looks like Todd. Okay. Forty-nine flies. That's just really pretty. Very pretty. That's about three hours old. Oh, is it? <laughs> we have a. Um, Merrill, yep. Merrill's a very experienced turner, and um, slight OG. Yeah, slight OG. To be an OG, I guess that would need to be be flared this way. I, Merrill chose to flare and then bring it in, but it has a nice rim treatment and a, a good substantial base, and the, the weight is nice. Beautiful wood, pretty Just wood. to let you know that I brought all those cherry pieces in, they all came from one log. Oh, is that right? Wow. Plus there's a, a bigger salad bowl than that one that I got out of it that's full already, and I've got about 12 or 14 pin blanks, one more bowl blank, and two natural edges to finish up. That's fantastic, that's great. It's really pretty wood. Two smaller scale pieces, decorative with the bark. Um, this one's fairly thin, nice weight, turn base. That's Merrill's also, that's cherry wood, that's pretty wood, and a decorative, fun shape. It's very thin. Yeah, that's And this is also Merrill. And I love that you kept the bark on there. That's, that's really pretty. It's a nice rugged bark. Gives a lot of character to it. Uh, and turn bottom. What did you finish that with? Huh? What did you finish it with? Uh, I have a finish that I made. It's a... Uh, <coughs> Uh, a mixture of uh, tongue oil and um, 
getting uh, gel varnish. This has a beautiful finish on it. Uh, maybe a wax finish. Wax finish. And that's just a pretty little creative piece. The bottom is very uh, ornate. Very detailed. I'd say Bob is a very detailed person. <laughs> Details bottom. Very detailed. The date, his name, very uh, very detailed turning. And uh, the inside is perfect. Is it what? No, I think it works for that. that that's really a really Yeah, I think it works. The inside is just immaculate, very well finished. No undulations at all, super smooth. I, I never heard uh, of that before. It is hard. Okay. And then a, a teacher in Hawaii that always told me, bring it up to a fine edge. And that's exactly what Bob's done, is bring your rim up to a fine edge. And you'd always say that to me. You know, you never leave a square edge. And that has a beautiful fine edge. I've been experimenting a little bit with square bowls, and I really like them. Here's another very detailed bowl from Bob Byrne. With a four dollars and ninety-nine cent price tag on it. I mean that, that's a that's a yeah that's a museum piece. That's a gallery piece right there. That's a fine fine piece. I call it the vortex. Okay. Is that lace? Yeah. It's lace. It just comes out of the wood. Okay. The chef was able to bring it out. Like, this you can enter a contest or win an award or something. That's a that's a beauty. Very detailed, fine, fine piece. Took the time to finish the edges, perfectly square. It's gorgeous. And a interesting contrast between the walnut and the spalted maple. And that is very interesting. The shape continues. I love a little cove bottom on there. That's really nice. That's a beautiful little piece. Inside, Joe Bradshaw. Joe Bradshaw. The inside is nice, curved, nicely rounded. There's nothing square or cut, cut off in there. So, uh, and the and the rim and the uh, top fits very nicely. It's not too small or not too big. We have a uh, mixed, kind of a mixed media glass and wood. Uh, just very creative. And anytime you can do something really different or creative, you go for it. So uh, that's a lot of wine. You know, the, the bottoms, the bottoms are turned, cold. Took the time to finish the bottoms and not just flat and cut off. These are nice. I mean, it's very interesting. Um, this is sanded to about a 600. It's it's a very finely finished Billy Club. Yes. <laughs> corrective action tool. Uh, What'd you call it? Corrective action. Tool. Corrective action tool. <laughs> It's really interesting. I like it. It's, it's really well turned, spindle turned. There's a multi-axis candlestick. Uh, very interesting. I'm always fascinated by multi-axis turning. So uh, well thought out and planned. Very creative. <laughs> These are, uh, this is yeah, absolutely gorgeous. So delicate, it's like uh, curly maple with a patina dyed finish, contrasted by the maple top, very to a fine edge, which is really cool. Inside is perfect, it's so smooth, well finished. It's Bob's, very fine. Another museum or gallery quality piece. Very, very detailed. Even these little rings are very, very fine. And on the top of the base, he's got additional rings. Gives it that extra value. Detail. It's a really pretty piece.
Is a little pepper mill. Pear, uh, pear pepper mill. Okay. I mean, it works. It's pretty. It's, it's really catchy. It's a fun, fun shape. Something different. Not like something you'd ever see. We have a. Uh, This is very round. It's balanced. It's not too heavy on the bottom. This is first piece. Okay. Wow. This is first piece. First piece. Wow. Now that's a lot of natural ability right there. In vision and seeing that curve. Uh, Reed Jones. Yes. Reed Jones. Yes. Okay. That's a beautiful piece. Um, when you do another, you might want to work on this to create a little foot of some kind, maybe with a code or to eliminate that uh, square base portion. But this is fantastic. It's really a pretty shape. Yeah, it is good. No, it really is gorgeous. Uh, well sanded, well finished, nice rim. We have a <laughs> we have uh, two matching cups. It's like cedar. I would say cedar. Old cedar. Okay. Okay. It's an architectural design. And now, uh, just it's creative, creative. <laughs> I brought I brought this in just to show something. I, I turned this, and I I don't think it works. And I wanted to just show why. The initial plan for this one it's pretty light. I wanted to get as thin as I could, and have it balanced. But with a big hole in the center, I, I just I don't like it. I don't think it works. The object was okay. <laughs> block had some bark on the exterior and I thought if I got it oriented I could get a nice kind of a narrow rim ridge through there where you could look into the piece and when the bark started to chip away I ended up seeing that wow the bark was just clustered in one spot so I finished it but I ended up with an owl hole in the middle so uh, I spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> I bought a, a Nichols boring bar, a six foot boring bar, and I thought, well, I'm going to try that. And so with this giant thing mounted on a lathe, I go in and it took forever to try to get, get this hollowed out. But it was with a boring bar. Thing. Literally like hours. Yeah, hours. Yeah. hours. I mean, I mean, totally what you have good 25 hours, probably. And I was disappointed because it ended up with a big owl hole. Appreciate that. But anyway, it's kind of an experiment. I just keep it because... I was thinking maybe carving it, carving this at some point if I could ever carve it. You like it? Anyway, I just wanted to... I think when you're going to leave bark in a piece, it should not be, in my opinion, a major... You know, bark can be really pretty if it's kind of interspersed, but not a large <coughs> void into a piece. That's my own personal thing. So, but I don't behold it. It is. I appreciate that. You know, it has the coat bottom. I appreciate it. And the shape. I, I like sh working on shapes, so you know, at least I think I got the shape right, but I didn't get the wood the way I like it. I like it with the hole. If you just use that hole to hollow, you might put one in the top. Put a, put a stuffed animal. Put a stuffed animal in there. Kind of hanging out of it. Dalvin it in a birdhouse. Is that it? Yeah. 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 You should show We have one more. You'll see your board bar go in. This uh, is spalted maple with carved. I love the three 
carved feet. That, that shows a lot of, originally that would have been solid, and they took a carving tool or a reciprocating carver and created these feet. And that's really pretty. It's got a nice curve, it's a small piece, but it has a lot of figure with that Rosa maple. Even offcuts of rare wood or decorative wood can create really captivating small pieces. So that's, that's pretty. They're really hard to take pictures of. Oh, yeah, because they sit flat. You can't see the flat. Right. So anyway, that's pretty. You need a pedestal. So, thank you. All right. Thank you.